Hey, I'm Lisa. I'm Chris. And we're in action. So, guess what we're doing today? We decided just to have some fun. We did a bit of a yarn haul. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, we want to show you what we did. We did an a knit sheep yarn haul. Mm -hmm. Specifically. Yes, we did. So, we both had some favorites that we had been eyeing. And we were like, I'm getting this. Do you want to go first? Okay. Show us what you got. Well, I got some cumulus, and I can't show you all my skeins because I actually started making stuff out of it. I got some cumulus in, does it say the color? Yeah, in goldenrod mm -hmm. and whatever this is. Because <laughs> <laughs> ball band is nowhere to be found. But I'm actually already making a sweater out of this. And let me tell you something. I was like, you know, new to fingering weight yarn. And so I got all excited and I started making all kinds of things out of fingering weight yarn, including this, which is a slutty cardigan. Um, there's something in this effort was to make. Because <laughs> sweaters go quite a bit faster. You think? So I started a sweater like last week and now I'm, I'm on the sleeves and I'm almost done with my sweater. But it can't just be any old worst of weight yarn. I actually really like human yeah. a lot. It's a cotton. It's a, 96.4 or something like that. Yeah, I have it right here. 94% yeah. cotton, 6% yeah. nylon, and it's a chainette and it's just soft and it's very easy to work with. Frogs beautifully. Don't ask how I know. Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> but it frogs absolutely perfectly. And this is this is already becoming slow. And I believe it's 251 yards to every 100 grams. Okay, sure. And we have some of that on sale at the store right now. But we're not shipping orders this week. We're not. <laughs> oh, ship ship next week. I do have a ball bag. Oh, look at it's that. other color is called Renaissance Island. Yeah. I like Cumulus because it's got a hand like a super soft yarn, but it's still warm. I wear my poncho I made out of Cumulus and I was cozy. I'm very happy working with it. It's one of those yarns I've been I, I've been eyeballing all the yarns. Let me stop lying. Okay. But okay. I as soon as we got it, I really liked it. I was just like, oh. I like non-wool natural fibers. So cotton, silk, linen, those kinds of things. Just like right up my alley. You give me a nice cotton and I'm very happy with it. Yeah. And because Crystal is the super soft yarn person, Cumulus is right up her alley. Oh my gosh, it's so soft. I mean, you say that like it's a weird thing, though. Don't it's you not soft yarn? I, I do, but not for everything. I don't live a nice one, all right? That's all I have to <laughs> say. Okay, I'm going to go next. I got some skeins of Andorra in the black, and I had, I love the black and the teal as soon as we got it, and I was like, ooh, I like but I like that it's not like a midnight black. It's more of a charcoal. And I love that slight, I don't know, variance in the color. It is a, a really interesting blend of, um, oh, there it is, merino, highland wool, and mohair. So I have a, a little plan for this. You know, I've been talking about making a twin set for ages. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a twin set with it. But not with all of it. So this is going to, and I'm not doing a your typical twin set. I'm going to do a twin set that's a camisole and a diaphanous sweater. Well, that's very fancy. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. So this is going to be for the camisole, and I will be you making. Talk good. Huh? <laughs> you talk good. I do talk good. <laughs> I'm going to make the ripple camisole from Jesse Maid. So that's going to be in my. Um, is that crochet? No. It's just got like ribbing. The whole thing is ribbed. And I'm going to do it in this black. And to partner with it, because I was like, oh, twin said yes. I'm going to do the cherry sweater in all mohair. And this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous rose. And this is on. Ella Ray Silky Kid. And it goes a really long way. So I think the skeins I have, the balls I have, will make that sweater beautifully. 
and I'll be wearing one over the other. What else you got? I too have some Mandoa. It's a sport weight. Yeah, it's a sport weight. And so I will be using these three colors together. Oh, nice. With Braille Pixel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at that. Yes, look at yes, that. Yes, yes. You see it all. You see it, the thing coming together. So this is going to be a sweater. And it's going to, I guess, going to be color blocked. With some of this. Some of this. Y'all know Pixel. Lisa's using Pixel to make her uh, Alaska sweater. I, I like this color a lot. It, they, they don't put color names in these, I don't think. Not on no, the, on the website. They, yeah. It's on the website. Here, let me see what I can take but a look. What number is it? I can look for you. It is color quick. number 2251. Let me see who put the color in. Like, people who make yarn, y'all know the name of the color is part of the thing for us. Just like when you buy lipstick or nail polish, mm -hmm. right? Because we used to all be crazy about this lipstick called Cherries in the Snow. Yep. Just because the name <laughs> is evocative and yeah. you love it. It's a uh, mojito. Mojito. And then Andorra in, uh, let's see, Dijon, that's appropriate. I believe this one's called Avocado. And this is Stone. Yes. So I too have lusted after. <laughs> <laughs> she snatched up that gray. I was like, oh. I surely did. She was like, You're taking the gray. I was like, Yep. <laughs> I sure is. And I was thinking immediately I would do the any day sweater from Rolling in this. Because I've always liked that sweater. I don't know the sweater. Now, I this is a worsted weight mm -hmm. and it's, it's made for something a little bit chunkier. So I might actually hold this with some mohair to pump up this yarn a little bit. So it will be super soft, lightweight, and gorgeous in this sort of soft gray. That will go with all my rose colored things. What do I have? What do I have? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now I know. I've been talking about this yarn since we got because I meant it, it was made for me. It was my yarn. It was it was made specifically for me because look, Bram, that's my name. That's my name right there. <laughs> Crystal Persuasion. What's, what's my name again? What's, what, what's, what's my name? I think your name is Crystal. That's right. That's right. That's my name right there on that yarn. So this one marinated and it is an um, M MCN yarn. So it's got merino, cashmere, nylon, and it's got incredible squish. And let me tell you what that's going to be partnered with. So it also got marinated drizzly day i love this gray yeah. i feel like it is such like a moody gray but and i like that and the name is so perfect and it's yeah so these two are going to happen together with some of our burger like oh look at that blue jay yeah it already looks good together oh my From gosh. three bunnies so these three are going to be a sweater it might it might have some cabling in it we'll see how i'm feeling but yeah that's going to be a sweater right there. Oh, yeah. So this is uh, Three Bunnies Designs. Uh, Blue Jay, because she did some bird yarns for us. Okay. Now, these, I don't know what I'm going to do with yet, but I love the way they all went together. So I'm going to turn them into something together. This is Marinated Yarns Fairy Braids. This is Andorra, and I'm not sure what color. Oh, it's called Brick. And this is Queensland Rainbow Beach in Moonwind. And I just love the red tones, and I thought I could pop that marionette. It is showing a lot more red it. on camera, but it's, yeah. it's definitely it's a true like rust. That. Yeah, it's truly a rust in real life. But I don't know. I'm going to put these together into something. Don't know yet, though. I have, like, a vague idea of what each thing is supposed to be. But, you know, that yeah. could change. Don't hold me to any of this. Yes. <laughs> because I also have a plan. I saw this um, super lightweight, airy shawl. 
well, they called it a wrap. And it turned out it was like a big thing on the runways because then a, a lot of companies started making them. They're very wide, they're very long, but they're very light and weightless. And this is what I originally picked the mohair for, but then I saw the sweater and got my head turned. But I'm definitely making one of those this year. If it's not in this color of mohair, it will be in another shade of mohair. Mohair we got. Yeah. So it's going to be. I don't know if people are scared of mohair. Or super white. lightweight. We still have a lot of mohair. And I am picking, I picked these two out of Three Bunnies Designs. I had to have this one because it's called The Shops at Run Cocos Woods and I'm sentimental. You're going to use those together? No. Okay. This is going to be a pair of socks. You know, oh, I like okay. to make socks. Yeah. And socks. this is Cranberry Bogs. And this is also going to be a pair of socks. I mean, imagine that, making socks out of sock yarn. <laughs> Ooh, we'll wonder if they cease. Will they never, ever cease? <laughs> what you got? Uh, I have one marine in it. Let me tell y'all. Because y'all have been scared of color. So... We actually didn't sell any of this color, and I'm judging all of you for not buying it. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is Tequila Sunrise, and I'm going to pair it with some lemon ice. But I have a plan for what I want to make with this, because I have been spying some vintage crochet patterns. Mm. And a lot of them were like sets. It would be like a jacket and a skirt, right. or a jacket and a dress. Or like a twin set. And it was just like, all of a sudden, I just had like this picture in my head of something like a twin set or a, a suit, some multiple yeah. pieces made out of these. So right now, I'm thinking like a jacket and skirt out of this. This mm -hmm. is what the thought is right now. We will see out of this. But it's going to have some accents of this color. Got it. And then this will also be a top. Okay. So I'm thinking to make myself like a whole three piece suit. Oh, stop. Out of <laughs> this yarn. I want to start this early because I want to have it for spring. Yeah. I want to be able to wear it when the weather is appropriate for it because this is still wool. It's finger and weight, but it's still wool. It's got some cashmere in it. So I still, I want to be able to wear it when the weather's still a little bit cool. Yeah. But yeah, y'all going to see me coming from a mile off <laughs> in this. But yeah. It's going to pop. So I have been wanting to make something lightweight, like a summer tea of some kind. So I picked up some chai. This is a blend of linen and silk. It's 56% linen, 44% silk. And it works up just beautifully. So that's what I'm going to do. I, I'm thinking there is a pattern called Woven Shadows. I might you be using like a that. Pattern in mind. You have like a little catalog in your head. I'm like, yeah, I have no idea what's out there. I don't you know, know what people are making. I don't, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> like, wh when do you do this? When are you like looking at all these patterns? I early in the morning when I'm sleeping. Probably. Okay. Yeah. I look early in the morning. I look <laughs> Let me tell y'all. Any kind of thing could happen in this house from like six to nine, and I will have no clue. And on the opposite end, anything could go on, you know, from one to three. And, and I, I would know about it. a whole circus up in here. And I'd be like, really? Hmm, interesting. But I thought something kind of lacy and open in that linen and silk combination, that would take me right from spring into summer. In the spring, I could wear it with like a little topper. And in the summer, it's it works on its own. I too have some shy. And I wasn't even gonna take any shot, but mom took some shy. <laughs> and Lisa took and some shy. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what happened. It's like I don't want to be the only one who doesn't have chai because we were like that. <laughs> we're all like, well, like, you got it. I want it. Um so my yarn and but I did want chai to, to be clear. I didn't just like take it because other people took it, but I wanted chai. Um, but you know, I was like, oh, should I take it? And anyway. I wanted some chai because it's silk and linen. They, they they might as well put my name on this yarn too. So I got, I have a lot of this red and then a little bit of this kind of charcoal gray color, which I think look freaking amazing together. Yeah. But you know what I want to do with it? You tell. I want to make like a jacket kind of like Chanel inspired. You know? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. this has got like, 
oh, it's a little tweety, almost kind of a heathered kind of thing. So it, I feel like even with a very simple stitch, it's still going to give you a little bit of texture. Yeah. And then I will do like the accents of the wrist and the, all the edging. Mm -hmm. and, and then that's charcoal gray, yeah. So we'll see how that goes because that's a very like structured jacket, very specific look. I'm actually going to have to like look at some pictures and really yeah. kind of explore those jackets and see yeah. what features specifically that you want to pull in. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But that's the plan. I got all kinds of hoop dreams, people. Don't hold me to and any of this. It, when you're swatching, try holding that with a little bit of mohair. Oh my mm. God. I swatched it with mohair. It was wonderful. Mm. I don't know. We'll see. I don't even know what color. Do we have no hair? I got to look and see. Uh -huh. I know. You know what? Because you often use the mohair with like a same color mm -hmm. yarn. But I'm wondering, because I think, we, do we have black mohair? I think we might have some. Because it might be nice to hold it with a mohair that's a different color and just get more of that Yeah, effect. you can change the color by holding a different color mohair. So we'll see. We'll see. But that's the plan for this. So you see, Lisa has like a pattern in her head for each thing she wants to make. Not, I don't, not I'm just like, just sort of. Sometimes it's just, oh, that, that, that'd be nice. I'm just three swatches to the wind, honey. <laughs> so I had also lusted after this from the time we got it in. So I was like, you know what? There's two of these in the same color. I'm going to take both. It's 1,400 yards of 100% merino and it gradients just beautifully. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet, but I will. I will leave myself Make a open. Nice sweater. It's fingering weight, so I don't think I'll be yeah. making a sweater out of it. Nope. I don't know why she's against fingering weight sweater. It would take a year. It would not take a year. Okay, yes, it took you six months to make a DK weight sweater. Okay. <laughs> it would take a year. Take you. Well, okay, I can't even say that's 100% true because I didn't work on it every day. I think I was a little lackadaisical in it because I gave myself so much time. Um, oh, and by the way, sweater update didn't quite finish it in time for Christmas, but I'm closer to having a Christmas it's sweater than real, I've ever been. Real close, yeah. like y'all, y'all saw the picture when she tried it on before it had the sleeves. Like, it was, ooh, it was like just right there, <laughs> and it has sleeves now. It has sleeves now. So I will have a, a holiday-ish sweater for all the holidays that are coming that are coming up. <laughs> It'll probably be finished like in the, right right around the turn of the year. <laughs> but since I have so many other sweater projects I want to do, I got to get crack a lacking. Mm -hmm. I disapprove of that so much. So, what else do I have? <laughs> oh, so we had this done for a while, and I, you know, was trying to give customers first crack at it. Oh, that's where that went. Okay. Yes, that's where that went. <laughs> this is the Mitchell's Creations and I love these colors. Yeah. This is it's called Ginger Snap. It's this is glorious. glorious. I absolutely love this. Check that out. And then with this. <gasps> She's doing a black that I want to get some of right now. I don't know what it's gonna be. I have no clue. But these were like the the, the stragglers. These were the very last three skeins that we had left. And I was just like And I, I don't I don't I don't know what I'm gonna make yet, but I'm just kind of like hoarding them like a dragon. Like just I'm just oh. sitting atop all my yarn. <laughs> so sad. So very but, sad. So it's it's a fingering weight. It is 75 merino, 25 nylon. Um, this color is called Brazil nut. And like we said, this is ginger snacks. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's gonna be, but it's gonna be cute. It's gonna be cute. It is. And it's gonna be cute. What else we got in that bag? Because I'm done. I don't have any. You know what? So she did like her her shop like all in one day. <laughs> I've been taking a little, yard, mm. a little bit more each. <laughs> so I have I have a couple of other things. What you got? I have some of the whisper lace. You've been going on and on about this. Yeah, lace. actually. When we ordered, I ordered myself some whisper lace. So I have whisper lace. So I, this, I just want to do a striped tunic length sweater. Yeah. That it's going to be very, very simple, but I think it'll be really cute and very lightweight and comfortable to wear. Um, 
I have to think of, I'm, I'm thinking maybe I want to do kind of a lacier stitch pattern, mm -hmm. but I have to go through my stitch dictionaries and see what I come up with. But yeah, that's going to be really simple, but really cute, I think. Um, are the colored names on here? Yes. Yeah, so this is Ebony. Mm -hmm. And this is something else that's not Ebony. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is Fog. Fog. Okay. And then this pink one is called Blossom. Yeah, I have a sweater's worth of fog upstairs. So I'm going to have an Ebony Fog Blossom sweater. <laughs> I like that. And it may actually be me, the Ebony Fog Blossom sweater. I like that, yes. And then I did get some of this fur. Because when I tell you I was coveting, <laughs> I was coveting this fur. So we had like a lot of this color left. And I don't know what it's called. But, and then we had a few of these left. So I'm going to, I, the idea is if it works out, it'll be kind of like almost like a bomber style jacket. Yeah. But the body will be this color, and then the sleeves will be this color. And then I'm actually going to take some of the uh, the DK weight yarn that we have. Ultra Alta. 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 Um, I'm going to take some of the Alta Truth that's in this kind of greenish color and do my cuffs and the bottom. Oh, yeah, okay. So hopefully th this one I actually have like a swatch of this. So I think I know, you know, hopefully I have enough yarn for it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I've been wanting some of this fur from day one, like literally the day we got it in the store. I can say that about a lot of yarns though. We buy yarns that we like for the store. Yeah. Like we don't try to sell something that, you know, it's just, it's popular or whatever. Just no, like we really like, very carefully think about yeah. what we're going to put in the shop. Yeah. So you will hear us say, oh, I love this yarn so much. It's true every time. Yeah. Because <laughs> if we didn't absolutely like it, and sometimes we had like tips about different yarns. Um, oh. <laughs> Y'all know I snatch this up, right? Because <laughs> it's cotton. And this, I think this green color is so pretty. And I feel like this is something I would very much want to wear in the summer. That green has always been and your color. Mom made a tank top out of this. And it came out really cute. And deliciously soft. So I was like, so I, I think I have four skeins of this. I don't know what it's going to be yet. But summer, here you come. We had four skeins left and now we don't. <laughs> <laughs> That is mostly it, I think. Yeah, that's everything I have here. Yeah. So that is our knit sheep haul. Yes. As you can see, we plan to be busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because I just know. what I have here, if I were to make something out of all this yarn, this is at least a year's worth of making ahead of me. Yes. But um, I'm really excited about it. And then I just saw, if you watched our Ravelry with me video, I saw a, a sweater that I want to make. So I'm trying to figure out what yarn I already have that I can use for that because mm -hmm. I don't want to like buy new yarn for it. But we'll see. I'm a little, now that I'm sitting here, I'm a little overwhelmed. I'm no, like, no. I feel very excited. I can't wait to finish <laughs> my pixel sweater. <laughs> Because I have some, I, I, you know what? I have actually started downloading the patterns for the next things I want to cast on. Like I said, I want to cast on the lacy mohair shawl because I think it'll be wonderful to have to wear with all sorts of things. I want to cast on my Jessie made camisole and my. So you have like back. a make nine. I feel like you should post a make nine. You think? Yeah. Uh -huh. Because okay. all the patterns you just named, I, I feel like you already have in your heads these things. So just, you know, put it out there. Let your knit flag fly. Let my knit flag fly? Yes. <laughs> well, it sounds like you have a make nine too, you know. I It's that you're going to start from like ground zero. Yeah, I have like, a, I, I'm going to call it a design nine. A design nine. Because I have plans to design many things. But they're just plans right now. We'll see. I hope it all works out. Now, I will often alter, and then, you know, I have my other things that I've already started swatching for. So, <laughs> I will often alter the living daylights out of mm -hmm. something, but I don't know if I really 
I don't know if I feel a need to decide. It's like I can't necessarily say that something I want doesn't exist yet. Mm -hmm. So to me, I, I would rather just, you know, adjust something that already exists. For me, I feel like, you know, you read a lot about knitting. <laughs> like I don't read about crochet the way she reads about knitting. So I feel like a lot of the techniques and things that you might want to learn, you're learning them from reading all the things. I don't read all the things. Um, I, on the other hand, am learning just from experientially screwing yeah. up royally and trying again. <laughs> so because I honestly, I don't have the kind of material about crochet that you have available about knitting. Yeah. And I'm actually going to start taking a look at some of like her knitting books um, just to have a better understanding of construction. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the thing that would help me most. Yeah. Because like, you know, you can pick up stitch patterns anywhere or whatever. And I also, I really want to learn more about creating fabrics because yes. I want to know which yarns will do the things that I want them to do like holding its shape or draping or what have you. Mm -hmm. So for me, every project is is like a little lesson for me, a little workshop almost. I feel that way too. It's just that I feel like some things are almost exactly what I would want. <laughs> so like, oh, I can just push it a little, you know, or in my case, size inclusion is not there so i need to upsize it for my for myself and you know a lot of times that just does not mean making every single part of it bigger yeah but i have set quite the task before myself yeah i feel like i have too i can't wait till i discover what i'm gonna do with that rainbow beach combination I picked up because I really just kind of fell in love with the colors. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what it's going to grow up to be. I'm a little, oh gosh, I'm a little verklempt. No, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. What have I done? It's okay to have like, you know, ambitious plans. And I, I like your idea of doing a make nine. I, I guess I will try a make nine. Maybe I will skip. Just because, like out. I said, you, you've you been naming specific patterns like yeah, this whole time. You know what? I'll see them and I'm like, oh, you know, I really like that. I would love to make that. And what I also want to do is pull out some of my, you know, I don't buy pattern books often. Mm -hmm. I have to really like the patterns to, to get the book. I try to do this. If I like enough patterns that justify the cost of the book, I will buy that pattern book. But I have not made a lot of stuff for my pattern books. Well, so I want like to do at least one or two projects this year for mm -hmm. my pattern book. So I got, I have 52 weeks of shawl, so I might pull a shawl out of there. And I have 52 weeks of socks. Oh. And I have Silk Road socks. So I think I'm going to, you know, make some socks out of my, my fancy sock books because the socks in those books are beautiful. Mm -hmm. They are absolutely stunning. Um, but because... <laughs> So I definitely want to do that. And I have this book that I've had for ages. Mm -hmm. um, it's a whole knitted lingerie book. Uh, so I might make something out of that. I don't I don't know. I'm that. just gonna buy my own. <laughs> just no. I just I, I just can't get down to like those kind of fine details, like trying to make a wardrobe and then the underwear too. No. Mm-mm. I mean, like respect if that's a thing you 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 do, but I'm uh, mm -mm. and I'm kind of no. getting the sewing itch, but I I'm, I have nothing to say about I'm that. I'm not going to. We have that two much. sewing machines though, so this won't be a conflict. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting the sewing itch a little bit, but I'm going to resist because I have plenty of other things on my mind to make. I yeah I. I was just like, oh, are they going to be after Christmas sales on fabric? Because I'll probably be getting fabric from Joanne for the time being just because I don't know enough about different fabrics to buy them without touching them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, my fabrics got to be soft and comfortable to wear as well. So I will have to buy my fabric in person at the moment. If we were still in New York, I'd have more options for fabric, but. <laughs> I 
So if anybody is a sewist out there and you know local area places where you buy fabric that's not Joanne's, let us know. I'm going to be a sewer. <laughs> they call themselves sewists now, so I yeah. go with it. Like, I don't whatever. think we needed a new word, so I'm just okay. going to be a sewer, one who sews. But, um, and if you guys have plans for your new year making, I'd love to hear about it in our comments too. Because like I said, I got a couple of ideas. Like I fell in love with that woven shadows last year. And I was like, oh, I don't have time to make that. But yeah, I don't understand. I'm like in a fog right now. I'm like, how am I going to make stuff up all this yarn? <laughs> I think you can manage. We'll see. And you know what? I got a, I got a, I got a skein of the um, bird yarn too. I don't know where it is. I gotta find it. Yeah, you got the orange one, the cardinal. Yeah. So I might just do socks out of the cardinal too, because I'm thinking about some of my silk road socks. I've admired those socks for ages, and I have the second edition of the book, so all the patterns are correct now. <laughs> there were, there, there were errors. That's the unfortunate. There were errors in the past. You know, but that's a nice thing it's about getting a lot. A it's a lot, like I think, trying to like tech edit a book of that scale. I think so too. Fifty-two sock patterns. Woo wee! But if you were really like ambitious about your sock making, what I did like about the fifty-two weeks of socks is that the level of difficulty varies. Mm -hmm. So it's not all ex you know extraordinary looking socks that you're like, oh my god. How am I going to make that? So you could pick, you know, what you feel like at the moment. But there's 52 of them, so I'm sure I'll find one I like. That's for a good variegated yarn, you know. All right, so that is our knit sheep haul. So I, I need to let you guys know this is going to be our last podcast of season one we've done 13 episodes we are going to take a two-week break so our next podcast episode will appear on january 17th so keep an eye out for us and i hope you guys have a good holiday and come you know ring in the new year safe and well we're not gathering yeah we're not gathering just found out another cousin has covid I can't. I can't. I can't do it. Love you all dearly. <laughs> I'm so tired. I'm so very tired. Mm -hmm. And now I just gave myself a laundry list. Yeah, don't don't be overwhelmed by that. You're only going to do them one at a time. Two at most. No, just one. No, I've like recently I, I just came out of here. I was trying to work on multiple things. And technically, I still have the impossible dress going on, but Really, I'm just, I'm down to one project at a time. I've just been working on my worst of weight sweater. I feel so much better working on one thing. I don't know how y'all do it. I don't, like when I watch people's videos on YouTube and they're talking about all their whips and, and it's like whips plural. I'm like, what? How are you doing that? Because mm -hmm. I, mm -mm. But I don't know. I find that I need to work on things that I have the mindset to work on right then and there. So I will often have, a pattern, uh, you know, a, a project that I have to pay a lot of attention to and one that's a lot of stocking that, you know, I think going it's because I'm getting old. Remember, I used to read multiple books. I used to read more than one book at a time and my whole family thought it was the strangest thing. And it was like, how do you keep up with different stories? And I had zero trouble keeping up with different stories. It really started very innocently because I would always have a book on my night table because I always read a little bit before I went to sleep. But I had to commute to high school. I took the subway. And so I always had a book that I kept in my book bag for reading on the train because looking at your book and not at other people is how you keep the weirdos from bothering you on the train. <laughs> Never make eye contact, okay? Yep. <laughs> um, so I always had at least two books going. And then sometimes I would accidentally pick up another book like, or I would have to read a book for English class. So then there was like my official school book and the book bag book, which mm -hmm. I didn't take out of the book bag because I didn't want to be caught on the train with that book. And there was a night table book. Once in my life, I did read four books concurrently. I would never recommend that. I did it. I managed it. Because once I started that fourth book, I was like, oh, let's see how this goes. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I did it. But I don't recommend four. Three was really like comfortable for me. Mm -hmm. More than three, just don't even bother. But 
I had no trouble keeping the storylines and the characters straight. For me, it was like when you press pause on yeah. a video and I could just pick up from wherever I left off. I just don't think my brain works like that anymore. Oh, It was just, it was all young and fresh and it did all the things <laughs> brains do. And now it's just old and stewing and crotchety. <laughs> so it likes to focus on one thing at a time. Yeah, I, I don't mind having two projects going. Uh, three is probably going to be my max. But you know what I tend to do? I tend to look ahead at the next project. So I may not be like full on working on it, but I'm swatching or I'm doing or I'm sketching a little bit or, you know, I'm thinking about it, mm -hmm. you know. And I try to think in some sort of useful way that will be helpful with the project. So I will probably be alternating between two and maybe just have a sock going on the side, you know. Like a little side piece right there. A sock? Or not. Is it on needles? Does it use yarn? Socks count too? Uh huh. Okay. Because I need some new socks. So I'm, I'm going to focus on making socks. And I'm thinking about designing a, a pair of knee high, you know, not, not knee high, but thigh high stockings. Because I finally thought about, I did not want to do a pair of thigh highs all in fingering. I feel like that's going to take forever. Well, what are you going to use? I am going to use two yarns that are the same color, but one will be fingering in which I will do the foot that's going to go into the shoe. Mm -hmm. So it will fit into the shoe. And the other one will be either a sport or DK that I can run up the leg in some reasonable amount of time. This will be interesting. I think so. And I think as long as I hide the joining point. Yeah. That's what I'm it, thinking about. it won't be an issue at all. I'm like, oh, la, la. All righty then. So anyway, that's what I'm thinking about. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be busy. Yeah. We're going to try to get better about talking about our projects, like as we're working on them and like writing about them online and stuff. We'll see. That's just like a new habit that we have to develop. Yeah. So... Yeah, because I, I do need to write about the things I've been doing with my um, my sweater. Because the sleeves were interesting. Yeah. We can do it. I feel like I need a nap. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's Christmas Eve. I think naps oh, are God, totally allowed. Is. Oh, my God. Yeah. So when we're filming this, it is Christmas Eve, and we will be all officially taking our little breaky break when you finally see this. So we will be in the middle of our break, actually, because this will premiere on Monday. The I'll still be Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll try to make time for other things. I really need to clean my room, but I, I'm, you know, I started probably going to get obsessed. So we'll, not a lot else is going to get done until I finish this sweater. It's just the truth. But she's almost done. She just needs her sleeves. Yeah. And my holiday sweater is also almost done. It is. And I'm only doing like a 7-8th sleeve. So I'm coming to the point where the sleeves will be almost done. So I'm I'm very much looking forward to that. All right. I All think right. that was a lot. Yeah. So we will see you again on January 17th. That's when the next episode of our podcast will post. All right. Happy holidays, everyone. Bye-bye.